Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in my home village of Chalfont St Peter today. And what we're doing is we're going to do a follow-up to some videos I did back in 2020 when you, you know, had your daily exercise and you had to stay local. I re-explored the whole of Chalfont St Peter. I think I went down every road, every footpath there is. And one thing I discovered and was quite fascinated by was dotted around the village are these plaques. Now what they do, they show what it used to look like and what it looks like now. See, there's that, that bus stop. I think, no, that is actually a different bus stop, but that view there is that today. There's the precinct, it's um, for that view. So I visited all of the plaques back in 2020 and, you know, I had quite a good time. I enjoyed doing it. There were four videos. There was one sort of centered around the village center. I called it the lost village because, you know, a lot of the buildings have gone. The village used to continue out. We'll go over there later on in the video to what is now the bypass. So it's a funny way how the village has changed. A lot of the original village has disappeared under a bypass and yet we've got that huge new precinct. This is of course the parish church, probably one of the few buildings that hasn't changed. As we're about to, even though it's had extensions, as we're about to discover though, some of the churches in the village have changed considerably since 2020 because as we leave the churchyard here we're just going to go and find the first of these new plaques so in today's video we're going to look at all the new plaques there's just a couple of other changes that have happened to the village i wanted to point out since 2020 so this is the village car park there is a plaque over there um, so as i said if you want to see there's a whole playlist of the first four and then this one has now been added so if you want to see them you can have a look at the playlist now as we turn this corner here there's this building here which wasn't here back in 2020 or i think they were just starting to build it this is i think it's called the hub but it's what's replaced gold hill baptist church now we're going to go up to gold hill common have a look at the baptist church so effectively the baptist church has moved to here so you've got two churches in the village center as for aesthetics i can't say it's the best looking church in fact i don't even know to, does it look like a church but yeah if the people inside are enjoying it then that's that's great i personally think it looks like an old bus or tram depot i can almost imagine you know buses coming in and out. it looks like an old bus depot that's been converted into a church which in some places has happened i, I did sort of joke back in the summer i was in gemunden in austria which funny enough is about the same size as chalfon st peter and the station is about the same distance away from the town as George Crosses. And I said, and I did a driver's eye view of the tramway. There's a tram from Gamundan Station down to the village. And I basically compared it to Chalfont St Peter. I said, wouldn't it be great if Chalfont St Peter had a tramway running from here to George Cross? Because I think Buckinghamshire must be the only county in Britain or one. I can't think of any others. I don't think has ever had any electric trams because all of the big towns like High Wycombe and Aylesbury didn't have trams. There were trams in Uxbridge once. Stony Stratford in North Bucks had a steam tram, but that wasn't electrified. So anyway, um, there's not going to be any trains or trams in today's video. We're going to cross the road. That's new as well. They've refurbished St Peter's Garden, but that, that little lich gate, that's new. That I walked past here like, well, in the last couple of weeks. I'm fairly sure that wasn't there. Let's cross the road and have a look. So there is a plaque here. This is Church Lane. There we go. It's the first of the new plaques. Now this gentleman, he... So he lived at the Chalfont Park. I have also made a video at Chalfont Park in the past. Now he supplied land from Chalfont, well he lived at Chalfont Park, he owned a lot of land in the village. He supplied this land here as a burial ground. So have a look at that. So we're gonna walk through this new lich gate. Yeah, the wood smells brand new. And obviously you can't smell it on screen, but that, that's nice. And we're gonna walk up now into St. Peter's Garden, which as I said has, been completely refurbished since our last visit. From here, we're gonna go up to Gold Hill Common because I want to show you what's happened to the old church. It is still, at the time of filming, it's still there. Well, it is it's staying, it's not going anywhere, but it's not church anymore. So I'll show you what's happening. So as we get to here, this is St. Peter's Garden. So we're just walking now through St. Peter's Garden. As you can see, they've made like a circular area here. That wasn't there before, so that's that's all completely changed since we was last here back in 2020. I think a lot of the gravestones are from where the car park was 
they've moved the gravestones up here when they built the car park. And there was also a fence down here. So that was different. So they've, they've changed a few things here. And then, there you go, get quite a good view of the, um, of the garden. So this is St Peter's Garden. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna walk on up to Gold Hill Common. I'm going to follow the driveway up here. Let's go and have a look at Gold Hill Common. Here we are on Gold Hill Common. This side of things doesn't look really any different to, as it did in 2020. But it's the Baptist Church, which uh, I want to show you because that's changing a lot. As mentioned before, it's been replaced. It's no longer the Baptist Church. So there's quite a lot of changes going on up here. So there's no actual plaques to see. I just thought we'd use this opportunity to record the changes to the village as they happen. So as we come to up here, I can't help but thinking, I mentioned if there was a tramway in Chalfont St Peter, I know it's my fantasy idea, but it would run, say, from the village, probably taking the route the buses. I always imagine trams running along there to Charles Cross. Anyway, um, enough of my fantasies. Let's have a look. Because as we come along here, well, firstly, there's the Baptist Church. I know it looks a bit different. You can see a hoarding beside it. That's because everything but the church itself has been demolished. The church is being converted into flats. I understand they're going to be building houses all around it. So there'll be quite a few new dwellings there. So we're going to have a close look at that. Yes, there's a plaque here. That shows, that's looking across. If you look there, you can see those cottages. Uh, must be those cottages and then that house has either been altered considerably or been rebuilt i was thinking there was one obviously one on the other end showing how the baptist church looked no there isn't okay so the baptist church kind of looks how it would have done originally that's why i really wanted to come up here today because it hasn't got its extensions it's um it's a bit sad in a way seeing it like this because i went through a stage of going to the youth club there when i was a teenager um, there was a lot of happy memories. We had a lot of fun in that Baptist church. And um, the youth club was held in the hall behind. We'll cross there in a minute. Now, one of the things we used to sometimes do was we would go, look at that, to Rock House, which unfortunately is being demolished now. It's a, it was an old people's home. And we used to go and visit the people there. And they used to really, really like the company of a load of teenagers coming to visit them. It seems a shame to see that being demolished. I understand it was originally two big semi-detached houses and they got converted into the retirement home. Out the back was Graham House, that was where the more, um, oh, what's the word, like the ones who looked after themselves lived. And then the one in front was more the care or the nursing home. Just have a look and see if we can see, can't go in, but have a look, oh, wow, look, there's the church. So if I could go in, it'd be great, it'd be like doing an urbex, but yeah, it looks exactly the same. I can smell that hardcore demolition sort of smell so the extension used to be here now i started going there as a very young child my mother used to go to something called popping which was where you know the mothers used to go with their children and um you know the very young the babies went upstairs and the children i was probably about three or four went in the in the hall out the back i remember one day they were making a layout of a brio train set and um the young lady didn't know how to put the brio track together and four-year-old henry showed her how to do it there's, yeah, look at that, rock house, half a rock house. So for those of you who don't know, yes, I came past here yesterday and I'm fairly sure all of that was standing. So this morning they've been really busy. Imagine a mirror image of rock house. If I can find the old pictures of how it looked, I'll put them on screen so you can see what it looked like. Then I think the scaffolding is, is to protect the houses behind it because that's where Graham House, the more modern building, would have stood. Now, if we have a look here, there was an extension to the church here, and up there was what was known as the upper lounge. It was a long, thin room. And when I was a bit older, maybe about 14, 15, we used to go to a youth club up there. So that, yeah, it all seems a bit sad, really, seeing it disappear. And as I said, one of our activities was to go and see the people in Rock House. I remember one time there was an England football match on and um, I think I was the only boy 
that went to Rock House because all of the girls, you know, want, um, yeah, the girls went and the boys wanted to watch football. Don't think there's any more to see here. There used to be a house here. I remember on the side there was a, a building, or out of the building there used to be like a fire escape ladder and I always intended to climb down it when one of the youth club leaders wasn't looking, but that was something I never got around to doing. Interestingly, behind there, there was when I first started there, there was a small house and it was known as the haunted house. It was derelict. That got demolished and they built two flats on there. They have also now been demolished. They didn't last long. They lasted not even 20 years. So here yeah, it's all rather sad seeing the changes. Now the next place we're going to is somewhere else that has seen a massive change, not since 2020, but in the last 10 years. We're going to take our last look. This may well be the last time I actually see Rock House. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be there much longer. Um, we're going to go to the Grange now. Now that, I always think, is a very sad story. It was, a, it was the convent of Chaffles and Peter for a long time. It was a, a girls' school, and then they demolished all but the chapel there. I always think it's a real shame that they, that they demolished all but the chapel because the, the house there was a historic house. But that, for some reason, wasn't listed, so they just demolished it. So... That's a real shame, but at least with Gold Hill Baptist Church, at least the church is going to stay there. So, you know, for that view of, I'm not going to go back over there, but on the common and looking across to the church, that view won't change. Also, as I said, I used to go to that um, youth club. Another thing we used to sometimes do, all my memories are coming back now, we used to sometimes sneak out and go on what we called expeditions and, you know, go and climb trees and play in the park and that. And then I think once we got into the summer, they just basically let us do it oh and another really good evening was um snowed one evening so i turned up with a sledge i happened to have like a, a swiss mountain rescue sledge and we had a few you know goes up and down the hill and i remember at the end of the evening they they all sort of said to me oh you've you know you've entertained us all with your sledge you sit down and um all of my friends called me back to the church and i just sat there on the sledge so yeah there's a lot of happy memories from the old baptist church anyway I'm going to go down there now, down into those trees, and we're going to go and have a look at this new plaque at the Grange. Here we are at the bottom of Gold Hill. That's the hill I said we used to like sledging down whenever we had any snow. We're now going into the uh, Grange or the old Holy Cross convent site, leaving the common behind us. So it's all a bit sad, really, what happened here. They demolished pretty much all of it except the chapel the only sort of good thing that's come out of it is this woodland here is now you know public can walk around there there's a path that goes off in a minute and that's the old stations of the crosswalk which the nuns would have done now a few years ago you could still see you know evidence that that's what it was i think today i doubt anyone you know would realize that's what it was but if you were to go off up that path up there i have done a video a few years ago before the site kind of became well, was finished in its new guise and the chapel which like i say survives and is here i'm not sure what's going on but it always seems to be locked but when i came here then it was still a bit of a building site and the doors were open so i walked in had a look if you want to see that video have a look at the link on the screen now and it was fascinating it was just like how the baptist church was that we saw today it was just sort of empty and as if people had just walked out and left it and i remember there was newspapers in there from in this little room there was some newspapers about 1964 they've just been there all that time it's the small tower so they've kept the chapel supposedly for community use although i've not ever seen any community events taking place there that's not to say they don't um i just haven't seen any so here we are that's the so the reason for the hat renders wall there is because that's where it had been joined onto our buildings so most of the school i think was sort of here i can understand them knocking that down but the grange the historic house that was there you know that's terrible that that was demolished and but you know they wanted to build a load of houses i can understand them building the houses it's progress whether we like it or not but there's been numerous other developments where they've managed to incorporate a historic building into today's development you know they could have just come up with a different road so the road basically goes right through where the house would have been to so think you know a house that dated back years and years was standing here until only a few years ago it just sort of seems so wrong they demolished it that up there that's the old nun cemetery they've obviously known 
not to build on that. Um, and like I say, they've kept the chapel, but as for the house that they demolished, well, there's a plaque here, and I can show that to you now. So as you can see, the estate, it was dates back to 1224 and we can see what it says, but you know, it's that's how historic we're talking. We're not talking of, you know, a, a, an attractive turn of the last century house that got demolished, which unfortunately happens a lot. We're talking about something very, very historic. Anyway, unfortunately this is what it is today, but at least that plaque's there. We can see what it looked like and I'll probably always remember the old building. I used to stand um, in like where I could and look into the site and watch them demolishing it. It was a shame, just a bit like, I mean, Rock House, yeah, it's a shame that's going, but this is like a hundred times better than Rock House, just watching it disappear every time it came past until it had all gone. Anyway, I'm gonna go and find some more plaques now. So here we are, we're now down in the village centre, just looking up Marketplace. That way's the High Street, and then looking that way is the Paris Church, where we started. There's a new plaque, I'll show you this one just as we're here. Um, that would have featured the first time round looking down the high street. So that was in the video the first time round. Now the, the one we're going to um, is, well there's two others. We'll just have a quick look at these ones just because they're here. There's one, obviously this is really quite an interesting one. That shows the Ford, these bit Ford here. And these are the buildings that were here before the precincts. Look at that. Completely different. There was also this 16th century house, which was also demolished, unfortunately, to make way for the precinct. So, I mean, really, I think when they got rid of the precinct, or when they got rid of these and made the precinct, they effectively made Chavos and Peter into a town. What I think would be really nice is the Misbourne actually flows underneath there. If they closed the car park and just made it into a plaza, and uncovered the Misborn, a bit like they did in Hemel Hempstead with the River Gate. The River Gate was culverted, they uncovered it and you've got a really sort of nice town centre. They could do that here and have like a really, really nice town centre, you know, where you could sit and drink coffee from the coffee shops and just be pleasant. Anyway, the plaque I want to show you, the new one, I think is this one here. And it says it's looking up Marketplace, have a look at that. Comparing with today's view, it's quite different. What we're going to do now, we're going to go across the road and there's one over by the Greyhound pub. So we'll cross here, passing the church again. Like I say, this is like the one bit of the village that's still, you know, not original, but it's got quite a few of the original buildings or the older buildings. And then, of course, you've got the precinct there. So this is where the Ford would have been. So that vehicle there would have been making a big splash. And no doubt this coach here would have made an even bigger splash had it still been there. It's just starting to rain now, which is probably a good thing because if you look at the River Misborn, you can see it's got no water in. I did a video series where I explored the whole of the River Misborn and um, that was quite exciting. And I remember I was sort of knowing it was going to start drying up and I think it had, parts of it had dried up by the time I got to this part of Sharpson Peter. Anyway, we're now heading out. So if you look at that building there, it stops there. The high street would have continued out into what is now the roundabout. So this is like the lost village. All of that would have been part of the high street as these plaques round here will show us. Just got to make our way between these two cars. So I think this one was here last time, Swan Farm. So that was demolished to make way for the roundabout. Have a look at that. And then a new one was this one here, Swan Cottage. Swan Cottage would have been about where the corner of the roundabout is. And then if we go back up onto the road, there's one more. Again, it was already here, but as soon as we're walking past it, I uh, might as well show it to you. I'll show you that one then. I've got to go up there, Joiners Lane, to have a look. There's a new one, I've been told up there. So have a look at that. That's the high street. Transformed into not really a high street at all, just a busy road junction. Right, I'm going to go up um, Joiners Lane and we're going to go and find the one more new plaque. 
Well, here we are on the other side of the roundabout. I just thought we'd stop here before I go off up Joiner's Lane. The rain's easing off a little bit. Because this plaque, when I did the videos last time, unfortunately it had been stolen and it's been replaced. So it's good to see it back again. That's how different Joiner's Lane was. Look at that. You know, it really was a little country lane, not the um, the busy sort of residential road it is today, which I'm now going to walk up. When we get to the top, I'm going to find this one more new plaque somewhere up there. So here we are, we're almost now at the top of Joiner's Lane, and we're coming to our final plaque. Interestingly, it's about the house behind this fence. Now, until fairly recently, this house never had any fence, so you could look straight in. So the house we're about to have a look at from what we can see, where it's just by the beginning of the Chalfont Heights estate. It's a private estate, but it's a footpath, so you can walk through it, so we'll be able to have a look. This house here, have a look at this. So George Gooch lived there, now he was an MP. So he lived here. It says that Winston Churchill actually came and visited him here in this house, that house there. Now it's interesting to see it's been altered a bit. If you look at the house here, the extension's been built out this way. And if you look at the dormer windows, that little one there, that's been filled in. So that one, that one are there. And then there'll be another new one about here. So we'll just wander into Chalfont Heights. And uh, if we stand here, you can see. So. Looking at the house, yeah, the, the, that window there, that's the extension. That one was in the picture, that one was, and just there, you can just see they've bricked it up. So it's been quite recently extended and altered quite considerably. But to think that Winston Churchill has been inside that house, it looks like it's been extended out the back. But as I said, for a long time, it always never had any fence on the other side. You used to see straight into the garden. So we're now in the Chalfont Heights estate and we're pretty much coming to the end of today's video. It's a pleasant walk back down to the village. So I think I'll walk back to the village this way. If you want to do this trail, you can get, there's this leaflet here, as a nice map. Although this is actually the old leaflet. Now there's been more added. I think you can pick them up in the library. I think this is where, fairly sure this is where I got this one from. So this one had a map inside of all of the plaques. But like I say, there's been quite a few new ones added so it's worth doing it whether you're local and live in Chalfont St Peter and want to discover more about where you live or if you you know would like to if you're visiting Chalfont St Peter you could come and you know discover a bit about it there's plenty of you know shops and cafes and places to get lunch if you wanted to make a day of it so yeah do do come and do this walk for yourself you don't have to do it in one big go but you can you know it's worth doing anyway from the rather pleasant Chalfont Heights with the ubiquitous sound of a lawnmower thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe and comment and from Chalfont St Peter goodbye